Hello, I'm David Meitzler. I am a board certified music therapist with Residential Hospice. I'm going to spend the next several minutes telling you about music therapy, explaining what it is, how it's done, and I will show some examples of how it's used at Residential Hospice with our patients. I hope you enjoy this presentation. We are very fortunate at Residential Hospice to have music therapy support out of our Troy location, also in the Lapeer branch up in uh, Northern Illinois, down in Southern Illinois, and then over in Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania, and that surrounding area. So music therapy is an important part of the care and services that we provide for our patients. Let's talk about a few examples of what music therapy is. I'll tell you, first of all, that music therapy is a clinical use of music to address non-music goals, to address the clinical goals that we have for our patients. And we address them through experiences like music listening, singing, graphic expression and drawing, lyric analysis, entrainment, instrument playing, songwriting, discussion, expressive movement, and more. So let's take a look at some examples of music and how it's used. How about this? Does this look like an example of music therapy? How about this? What about this? Music therapy is normally done by a a uh, board certified music therapist, that person has received a four year degree in music therapy, a bachelor of music therapy, or perhaps a master's equivalency of uh, music training and uh, clinical use of music at an institution. Some people also have a doctorate in music or music therapy, and it is often then um, something that they do with research or other types of education. So now how do we use music with our patients and music therapy? Well, a music therapist will typically visit a hospice patient and the instrument of choice is an acoustical guitar. That's because it's portable and easy to, to carry around. Um, it is also something that can be played uh, in, a, in a quiet environment, but it can also be played more loudly as, you know, as needed. So music therapy is a clinical use of music and we will do an assessment, treatment planning, implementation, evaluation, and adaptation. Now, as you may know, sometimes we visit our patients as clinicians only once. We may only have a short time with them. Other times we may know the patient for longer than a year. So sometimes we have to do all those steps that I just mentioned. We have to kind of do that all in one visit in a short amount of time. Other times with some patients, we have an ability to sort of stretch that out over a longer period. And as the patient's needs change through their time with us, we can adapt our music therapy to the patient and the patient's needs. For example, a patient who is uh, signing on with us, they may have terminal cancer. Well, we may have a different approach and have different clinical goals for them on their first visit versus what we may have when they are actively dying. So we adapt our therapeutic approach to what the patient needs at the time. Now, a music therapy visit with a patient will typically involve the music therapist coming with a guitar. Sometimes we also use things like shakers or jingles or sometimes we bring drums, or we will bring in a keyboard instrument, or we may use an instrument, a keyboard instrument that's available at a patient's home. It really depends on the environment where we are working and what is available to us. Essentially, in hospice care, music therapists will always have a guitar with them because that is such a portable instrument and it's easy to move from place to place with it. Now, music therapy is not just limited to people who are receiving hospice care. That's what we do here at Residential, but music therapy is used with other populations, such as children with autism or people in cancer clinics, perhaps dialysis centers or walk-in 
clinics or psychological treatment homes or other types of school environments, people with traumatic brain injuries. So in hospice care, we have a primary focus. Our main two goals with our patients in hospice care are comfort and quality of life. Now, depending on what type of diagnosis the patient has, uh, that will affect what kind of clinical goals we have. So let's think about on a patient with Alzheimer's and dementia. What types of clinical goals would the patient have? If we think about a patient with Alzheimer's dementia, well, they would probably benefit from expression or they may benefit from improved socialization or they may improve uh, or they may benefit from reduced anxiety or reduced agitation. So all those are actually clinical goals. Expression, reduced anxiety, reduced agitation, improved socialization. Those are clinical goals. And so we will adapt our music uh, to help the patient and we will guide them through those, um, we will guide them using music experiences to um, achieve those goals as much as we can. Now, as I said before, the goals can change from our earliest visits with the patient to our later visits with the patient. And that depends on the individual. So we use music in different ways to address clinical goals. Now, I've told you a lot about what music therapy is. I want to tell you a few things that music therapy is not. A music therapist is not a DJ. A music therapist is not a streaming service. We are not uh, entertainers and we are not doing entertainment when we do our work. Now that being said, understand you probably know that when you listen to music or you're enjoying it at a party or at home or in the car while you're commuting from point A to point B, you can find that pretty entertaining. You can enjoy it. You can sing along at the stoplight, right? That could be a lot of fun. But that's not really what the music therapist is doing. We're not really trying to entertain the patient. We are really trying to address their clinical goals. And if the patient enjoys it, that's fantastic. In fact, I would say that we want the patient to have a good time. Now, the patient doesn't necessarily know that they are receiving music therapy. In fact, if you think of an advanced Alzheimer's dementia patient, they may not know that these clinicians who are coming to see them are really working for a hospice organization and are providing them with end-of-life care. How does a patient get music therapy at residential hospice? Well, the nurse writes a referral and only the nurse can do that. So we really depend on nurses to write the referrals for music therapy when appropriate, when there are clinical goals to be addressed or needed. So a reason uh, for music therapy would not be because the person likes music. I have heard that a couple times. So we all like music. Most of us, I think everyone I know likes music, but that's not really a clinical reason as to have music therapy. A better reason might be to reduce anxiety, improve expression, manage depression, manage pain, improve socialization, reduce restlessness. There are lots of different types of clinical reasons why music therapy would be appropriate. Now, I mentioned that the nurse writes the referral for the music therapist. However, any individual on the team may be able to contribute some information and make a recommendation about what the patient might need in the way of music therapy. For example, at an interdisciplinary team or group meeting, we may have a, com a communication with about a patient and we may be reviewing their their chart and they may have a lot of anxiety and the social worker on the team may say, you know, this patient has a lot of anxiety and some restlessness. Music therapy may be warranted here. Could we write a referral for music therapy? Or the spiritual care person might say, you know, this person sings so much. They used to sing in choir. They love singing hymns. I wonder if music therapy would be able to help this person with spiritual support as a clinical goal. Maybe we could write a referral for music therapy. Is that possible? So the nurse and the team can make that kind of evaluation and uh, provide some additional feedback uh, during the team meetings and say, yes, you know what? This patient may benefit from music therapy. And then the nurse writes the referral. You know, 
we usually wait until after the first IDG or the team meeting in, before we write a referral for music therapy. But sometimes, as you probably know, we sign on patients and they have a more critical or urgent need. So in that case, the nurse might write a referral sooner rather than later and then let the music therapist know either with a phone call or an email and say, you know, uh, this patient just signed on with us last week. They are preactive and I think they would really benefit from a visit from you. Is it possible that you could see them, right? So our team, as, as you probably have figured out, our team really works together in all the dis different disciplines to provide as much care and uh, really a, a comprehensive approach to our patients. We use music in a lot of different ways through our lives. And if you think about the song, Happy Birthday, if I start singing to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday, dear, put your name in, happy birthday to you. Now, it may not be your birthday, but as I was singing that song to you, you didn't know that you have probably never heard me sing that song before, I'm guessing, but you were able to transpose it in your own mind. You knew what song I was singing. You probably recognized the language I was singing it in. And you probably had some very quick, brief memories of someone else singing at another time to you that very same song. Or you may have remembered singing it to somebody you know. Isn't that interesting that a simple song like that can do all those different things? It can stimulate your memory. It can stimulate your expression. It can uh, maybe hopefully bring you some good feelings, right? And that was just the song, Happy Birthday. So we don't often sing that song in therapy unless it's the person's birthday. But we also sing other songs that are pretty familiar. So we will sing classic standards, perhaps the song Over the Rainbow or maybe we'll sing under the boardwalk. Again, remember that we're not entertainers, DJs, or a streaming service. Rather, the focus is on the music experience to address the clinical goals. Maybe the songs we sing are classics by Ella Fitzgerald or Louis Armstrong, or the Backstreet Boys and other more contemporary artists may be appropriate too. Since we like to engage the patient when possible and have them sing along, Usually that means we present music that is familiar to the patient, maybe less of Puccini and more home on the range. I thought maybe I would also share with you a patient experience that I'm having. I see a patient who has multiple sclerosis and this patient's uh, stage of the disease is pretty advanced. So sometimes I don't even get to interact with them, but I will still be at bedside and provide uh, music, sometimes recorded and sometimes live. This particular patient really likes, you know, Pink Floyd and uh, more classic rock types of styles of music, which are a little more tricky for me to play on my acoustical guitar. However, again, music is, is adaptable and I can sometimes play certain kinds of songs in the ways that he might appreciate. But also I like to play recorded music and sometimes I bring in nature sounds, the sound of a babbling brook or some uh, sounds of rainfall or an ocean, different kinds of music to kind of set the space and kind of help provide some relaxation. Many times I might visit the patient and the patient is asleep for my entire visit. So I will still play or provide the music at that time because the auditory nerves are still functioning even when we're asleep. That's why you wake up when you hear your alarm clock or some other type of, type of alarm or, the, or a phone, right? A phone ringing. Now, in addition to providing care for this patient, I'm also providing care for the patient's mother. The patient's mother is elderly and she is her, his primary caregiver. And uh, so she also benefits from music therapy in a separate session that I do with her to help support her. I provide some additional relaxation, some reflection time for her, and then we do a song together. And that's just a nice way of doing some additional comprehensive care for this family. Let's take a look at a visit with the patient's mother that I provided some support to help her relax and give her some focus. Take a breath in through the nose, and out through the mouth. Just think for a moment that here we are, gonna relax a little bit. 
Let go of the cares of the day. Out the window. There it goes. Take a breath in. We say the word peace. 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 And think for just a moment about the peace that you have during the daytime. After we got done Those with this particular of portion of the visit where I was peace, doing some relaxation and some focus, yes. we also did some more discussion and we did some singing. And that put a smile on her face, and it helped, I think, energize her and provide her with some support from us. And so that's all very important. Now, every patient experience is different, as you probably may know. When we work with our patients, we don't always meet the family members. Sometimes we just meet the caregivers, or sometimes the patient is only at a facility, and we are working directly with their care team. So every patient experience is a little bit different, and again, we adapt our music and our therapeutic methods to the patient at the time when we are visiting them. A patient's needs may change through our time with them. Now, as you know, sometimes our patients, as I have expressed in, a, in an example earlier, sometimes our patients don't respond to us and they're rather quiet or they're sleeping or they may be preactive or actively dying. So we adapt the music to them and what they need at that time. Other times our patients might be alert and vibrant and walking around and opening the door to let you in. And we really just want to provide the best level of care that we can for these patients and families. Well, now let's go back for a moment and review some of those things we saw at the very beginning. Is this music therapy? How about this? What about this? Does this look like music therapy? How about this? Yes, that's an example of music therapy in action. So this has been a general look at what music therapy is and how it is used with our patients at residential hospice. And that will complete our orientation for today with music therapy.